Hi everyone, Steve here. I've got something a little bit different for you today because this is mainly a workflow and productivity tutorial. The scene I've got in front of me here is pretty unremarkable on its own. It's just sort of a standard social media type posting. But what is cool is how it's created because all the content, the text and the images um, is being driven by this Google form here. So how it works is you enter some text and you can upload an image and click submit and that gets pulled through to the project automatically and you can just render out a video um, and you can see every time we sort of iterate through here we'll get a different version of the video coming through as well so um, the cool thing about this setup is that you can create a layout um, for a client and then just supply them with the Google form and every time they want a variation of this video they can just submit an entry and they don't need to send you a brief or email you or transfer any assets over um, or you could distribute this amongst the whole company or even have it public facing and every entry in the form is going to um, generate its own version of the video. Um, obviously it'll work on a phone too so you could have it a client make take a photo on the phone uploads it to you along with some text via the form and you can just render out a video to a shared folder like a Dropbox or a Google Drive and they can get a video back within a couple of minutes and it's all on brand right colors fonts logos transitions and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've actually gone a step further and created like a web portal here, uh, which just links to the form. Um, so you could potentially create dozens of these. So you click this and it goes through to the form here. So you could have a you know a dozens of project files, uh, template projects, and all in one place. And you give the client just the one link, and they can just help themselves to videos as and when they need them. So it's a really cool workflow and a time saver. And as we're semi-automating video production. We're sort of reducing turnaround time to just a couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it all from setting up the form, linking the sheet and getting it all working inside Cavalry. And if you stick around to the end, I'll uh, show you how to do the web portal too, which is actually really simple. Uh, just a couple of disclaimers before we dive in. First, you will need um, the pro version of Cavalry to do this. As some of the tools we're going to be using are pro features. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is if you go to scenery, and just click on tools here you can get 10 percent off so if you did want to upgrade from um, a free license that's probably the best way to do it so you can get a bit of money off um, and secondly although i do want this to be 100 percent automated so you could have you know be fully hands-off and have this running in the background there are a couple of um manual touch points which i can't get across and um, get away from at the moment this does mean you will have to be involved in the process. I'm talking a couple of clicks, uh, but the good news is here that I am exploring some options with scenery, and we're hoping to have some sort of solution where it will be fully 100% automated. So you can maybe have this ticking away on a render node or a different computer somewhere, and it'll just generate videos every time you need them. So when that arrives, I'll make a video about it here. So, you know, subscribe and you don't miss out on that. So, okay, right, let's dive in and start creating this from scratch. Right, so I've just duplicated this uh, composition here and I've just cleared out all the um, data that's going into it and I've just got placeholder text and shapes at the moment. I'm not going to go through how to make all this because it's pretty um, basic stuff. But I would suggest that before you go and create the form, you do decide on what sort of layout you want. It just makes it a little bit easier to know what questions to put in your Google form. So I know from um, here I'm going to need a few text entries. I'm going to need a, an entry for what the person's name is going to be. I'm going to have a text entry for what the person's job title is going to be and they're going to do some sort of quote here so there's another text object here um, and also this shape here is what I'm going to be dropping the images in that come through from the Google form so it's a good idea like I say just to get that agreed with um, a client or whatever before you actually go and do the form itself um, and to create the form let's just dive into if you go into Google Drive you can do it direct from um, Google Docs but in Google Drive here just click new form and that'll just take us through to the uh, new form creation dialogue here. One thing I would say, just before you get started, just um, give the form a name so you know what it's going to be called, because this is what the um, the, the folder is going to be that pulls through to your Google Drive. So call this um, form to video. And the other thing I would suggest at this point is just click the folder button and move this to wherever you want um, all your images to go through to, because wherever this is saved to that is where when people upload an image that's where it's going to be pulled through to on your computer and if you just don't move the fold don't move it to a folder now it will just go to the root directory of your google drive which isn't um isn't probably going to be what you want so 
start making some questions here. Um, first entry is going to be the person's name. So I'm going to be, you know, what is the person's name? And I'm going to make this a short answer because it's just going to be a one-liner. And I would also recommend just ticking this box here saying required. Um, so they will have to enter something here before submitting the form. Second question, uh, what is their job title? Oops, hang on. And again, that can be short answer and required. And the third question is going to be what, what is their quote? And I can't type today. Hang on. There we go. Let's make this a paragraph, a longer answer. And again, make it a required answer. Now, for the image upload, let's just click a new question here. And there is a drop down here for file upload. Uh, yeah, continue. And again, make it required and just say upload image here. And you can specify. So I'm going to put on image here. And that is just about all we need to do. One other thing I would say is that on the responses tab here, um, on this little three little um, three dot menu, just click get email notifications for new responses. And that will mean that every time someone does click a new form entry, you will get notified and you can maybe use that to trigger some other sort of automations, or at least you'll know so you don't have to ask a client if they've submitted anything. So that's basically all we need to do for um, for the actual form creation. And then on the responses section, we're going to link this to a Google Sheet. So you just click this button, link to Sheets, and that will create a new Google Sheet and it will be called the name of the form. So that's all fine for me. I'm going to click Create and that will just open up the um, the Google Sheet. And you can see here what's going to happen. All the entries are going to go into their own column and we're going to pull this into um, Cavalry. So I'm going to go away now and just enter some um, entries myself just so we don't have to watch me do all that and I'll come back in just a sec. Okay, so I've gone away and made a few responses to the form myself and you can see the responses here in the Responses tab on Google Forms. And those responses have pulled through to the Google Sheet and all those images I've uploaded to, to my Google Drive and they've synced to my machine as well. So now we need to go about pulling these into Cavalry and a couple of things we need to do in Sheets first. Now the first thing is on the image upload column here, by default um, it displays the Google Drive link which isn't what we want because we want to actually show the file name here because we're going to use that to drive a smart image folder inside Cavalry. Now there is a pretty easy way around this and that's just by selecting the whole column here and just right click. Down at the bottom there is this smart chip option and we are going to click convert to file chip. Now what that's going to do is just extract the file name from that Google Drive link and put that in place of the link itself which is exactly what we want. Um, the only thing is there is a, this is one of those manual touch points I referenced at the start of the tutorial in that Unless I'm missing something obvious, there is no way of having this happen by default. There's no sort of formatting option. So you will need to do this every time there's a few entries. You can just, you know, it's a couple of clicks. You just select the whole column, right click, create smart chip. But if there is a way around it by, you know, scripting or a plugin, please let me know. Um, that'd be really helpful. Just drop a comment down. The only other thing we need to do inside Sheets is just to make sure on the sharing option in the top corner, make sure it's set to anyone with the link because it is by it's unrestricted by default and if it is set to restricted cavalry won't be able to um, access the link so click anyone with the link and then we're going to copy this link and bring this into cavalry um in the assets window up here just right click import google sheet and just paste that link in and that's going to bring the sheet into to cavalry here and we're going to do a similar thing um, for smart image folders so right click here and we're going to click import um, image smart folder and just navigate to where those um, the google form responses have, have synced to on your computer it should be on the file that you on the folder that you selected at the start when we um, started creating the google form so import the smart folder and if you're not sure what a smart um, an image smart folder is because on the face of it it does seem quite similar to an image array that it's just a collection of images that we're going to reference and be able to um, manipulate in certain ways but the only difference with this image smart folder is when you're using an image array you're using images that you have manually imported into your project whereas an image smart folder you're using um, an external folder which can be either on your machine or even a network location 
And that means that any time an image gets added to that folder, it's instantly available to Cavalry, which is exactly what we want for, for this instance. So let's just go about linking up everything. Uh, we'll start with the images, because that's the only tricky thing, really. We're going to um, drag the image folder here down onto your scene window. It creates a few objects here. There's the actual um, canvas itself. There's the image shade, and then there's also the little smart image folder utility here. Just get the shape that we're going to be dropping the images into, bring that up in your attribute editor, and on the fill tab, we're going to drop in the image shader into uh, the shader box here. And you do need to well, just double click this to bring it up in the attribute editor. We're going to have to just sort the fitting out. This might be different depending on what sort of layout and what shape you're using. I've noticed on this, on this scale mode, we're going to switch it from fit to fit vertically, and that's going to make it stretch the actual height of the shape here. And I will just need to offset this just to center it up a little bit. Now, the next thing we need to do is just find a way of um, scrubbing through each um, each image in the Google form for every time we want a different video. And to do that, we're going to use a string generator. So let me just um, clear all this out. We're going to double click to bring up the smart folder in our attribute editor. And on the little plus icon next to the path, just click, click this and click string generator. And it's going to bring this up here in the attribute editor. And we've got a few options here. And the only one we need to be concerned with at the moment is this formatted string option. Um, the next thing we need to do is just get the Google form here in our assets window, drag an instance of this into the scene window. It's a good idea just to name this so you don't get confused because we're going to have a few instances of this. So let's just rename this image um, image name. Double click to bring it up inside the attribute editor and you'll notice that there's an option here for column title and just navigate to the column which is the actual image name and that's this upload image uh, in this instance. Now just create a connection from image name and drop this down onto the formatted string and also we're just going to click the fixed row option here and that means that we can specify which row inside the sheet we're going to be accessing and now if we go onto the row index and just scrub through, um, every time we increment this, we're going to be pulling from a different um, row on the spreadsheet. Now, I've just jumped through a few things pretty quickly, so I'll just explain what's going on here. Um, so what we are telling Cavalry is go to this uh, row index here and on this Google Sheet. And one thing I'll just explain first is that even though the row index is set to zero, um, we are referencing row two on the Google Sheet because... Um, the, in Cavalry, in indexes always start at zero, and also in Sheets, we do disregard the first row as well, because that's just the column title. So um, inside Cavalry here, row index zero will be row two in the sheet, and then go up to row index one, that will be um, row three, and so on and so on. So what we are telling Cavalry to do here is to navigate to the Google Sheet, at this row index, get the name, get the entry of the column here, and if you see that exact file name, um, pull the image from this folder here. So every time we increment through a row index, we are getting a different file name here. You can see the file names changing here, and it's pulling that file from the folder. So that's pretty. Um, that that's the most tricky thing about this whole setup. The rest of it is pretty simple. So um, let's just go about populating the actual uh, string entries here, because that's a lot simpler. I'm going to pull in another instance of the Google form into the scene window here. I'm going to rename this person name and then double click to bring this up in the attribute editor. On the column title, we're going to go to the person's name entry. Um, let's just also find the person's name um, text entry here. And we're going to drag a connection from the person's name into the string. Uh, that's going to update. And the other thing we just make sure here is on the um, person name sheet here, just click fix row. So we're going to be able to manually choose which row we want to uh, to reference from the sheet. Let's just, whilst we're at it, let's just group these um, all these instances together so that they're all sort of um, tucked away nice and neat in the in the scene window. So I'll make a group there and just call this um, Google Sheet Entries. Now let's pull in another couple of instances because we do need to populate the person job title and also the uh, the, the quote bit from here. So let's pull in one more instance. Drop it in that folder. Let's rename this job title. 
bring it up in the attribute editor, select the correct column, what is their job title, and then find the text object, create the link from job title, drop that on top of the string, and then just make sure we've got the um, fixed row option checked. Uh, we just need to do one more for the um, quote. So drag one more in, let's call this quote. And then if we can find the actual quote text shape here, which is just here, we are just going to select the correct column title and um, what is their quote, make sure fixed row is checked and then just create this one last link onto that string there. So this is all set up now. There's only got one thing left to do and is that, that's to hook up dynamic render so we can control all the, um, control everything from just the one um, index. So open up your render manager here and keep this open. And with that open, we're going to open up all the Google Sheet entries we've got here. So I'm going to um, drag all four of those into the attribute editor. And we're going to create a link for each one from this dynamic index. So drag the dynamic index index onto the row index. Um, we're going to create a connection for each of these. So drop that on there, uh, drop it on there. And then the last one is just the quote here. And then now this should all just hook up nicely. And every time we just scrub through this one dynamic index, we will be having a, a, a different version of the video. And each each increment here will be a different row from the, um, from the Google Sheet. So Really cool workflow, then you can obviously just um, render these out as many as you need. You can do one at a time or you can batch process however many you want. So what I'll do now, um, I'll just show you how to do that web portal thing because that's just the last little piece of the puzzle. The little web portal that I showed you at the start of the tutorial, I'm going to be using Framer. And there's a couple of reasons I've chose Framer. The first one and the main one is just that it's super easy to use. I mean, if you've used Figma before, um, you'll be pretty confident with Framer because it's a very similar layout. There's no coding involved. And the second reason I'm choosing Frame is that we can, we can get away with just using the free plan, so we don't need to pay anything either. So sign up to Frame. You might want to use Webflow or WordPress, but I mean, Frame is probably the easiest way of doing this. Sign up to Framer, create a new project, and it will look something like this. And the cool thing about Framer is that it has all these pre-built um, sections and even full-on pages that you can use. And for the instance I chose at the start, I just used this pre-built section click it and it just literally adds it to your project and it's all working uh, as it should do and then it's just a case of you know adding uh, the right text in so let's put um quote post add some more text uh, create a new post here and then you can just add an image in as well so click that little box i rendered out one frame from the project and i'll just upload that here and the only other thing you need to do is just make this button work. So go back to your Google form and get the link that you will use to share. And then on frame, just click the button and the link option is in the top right hand corner here. So just paste that link in and then it's just a case of clicking publish. So the top right hand corner, the publish button, um, it'll either say publish or update. And this is the actual URL you're going to share with your client. So let's just click it to test it. And you'll notice that it does give you a, a randomly generated URL, but it is live and you only start paying for Framer once you connect it to an actual proper domain that you want to use for your own purposes. So this testing link uh, will be fully functional. It just won't be the one you want, but if it's, on, if it's not going to be public facing, it's not, not a massive issue. And we can just see this is live now. So this will open up the Google form. So that's pretty much it. I hope you like this workflow. There are a million other applications you can use this for. I mean, obviously Google Form has lots of other functionality um, like multiple choice questions and surveys and that sort of thing. So interested to hear what you're going to do with it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.